I'm David Mitchell, founder of Patients for Affordable Drugs. More importantly, I have an incurable blood cancer, and prescription drugs are keeping me alive. Every four weeks, I spend half a day at a clinic uh, and receive an infusion of drugs priced at $325,000 a year. I've relapsed twice, and I'm failing on the current drug regime I'm on, so eventually I'm going to run out of options. So the importance of this hearing, the importance of innovation, is not theoretical for me. It's uh, literally a matter of life and death. But my experience as a patient taught me one irrefutable fact, and that is drugs don't work if people can't afford them. When I learned I was sick, my doctors put me on a drug called Revlimid. For Medicare patients, out-of-pocket costs for Revlimid can run to $15,000 a year. We heard from one patient who sold her furniture, maxed out her credit cards, and is skipping doses in order to afford her Revlimid. The principal reason it's so expensive is because its maker, Celgene, has gamed the system and refused to sell samples to generic companies who want to bring a competitor to market. But Celgene's not alone. Take AbbVie, maker of Humira. Patent thickets and pay-for-delay deals will keep a competitor off the market in the U.S. until 2023. Ashley Craig is a small business owner from Texas. She needs Humira to treat her chronic illness, but it's too expensive. So instead of focusing on growing her small business, she has spent years grappling with the price and trying less effective alternatives. But to address the problem of out-of-control prices for drugs, we really must come to grips with some larger facts. Despite what the drug companies tell us, sky-high prices are not only about innovation. Multiple studies show there is, in fact, no correlation between drug prices and the cost of innovation. And taxpayers foot a huge portion of the bill for the basic science that leads to new drugs. In fact, every single drug approved by the FDA from 2010 to 2016 is based on science funded by taxpayers through the NIH. Meanwhile, independent analyses show that 9 of 10 Drug companies spend uh, more on advertising and marketing than they do on R&D. Why do drug companies charge so much? Because they can. Yes, drug companies should profit when they develop innovative new drugs, but we are way out of balance here, and it's costing us all in our family finances, health outcomes, and lives. I want to suggest three things we could do today to rebalance the actual risk of innovation with a fair price for patients. Reform patent law, end the days of monopoly pricing power without taxpayer negotiations, force transparency from drug middlemen. Let's start with patent law. Brand drug companies are abusing our system to extend their government-granted monopolies and block competition. They use a whole array of tactics. They use REMS abuses, anti-competitive pay-for-delay deals, patent thickets, evergreening, sham citizen petitions before the FDA. I'd be pleased to talk more about the bills many of you have introduced on a bipartisan basis to address these during the Q&A. Next, we really need direct Medicare price negotiation. Our current system is not working. We pay two to three times what other countries pay for the exact same drugs. One big reason is that other countries negotiate. We should, too. And finally, we really need more transparency around PBMs. These huge companies cut deals to determine how much patients pay, but it's all secret. 